Hello everyone, back to you to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's second video, uh, which will take us to around the 8th, 9th of March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles running to around a couple of weeks. So we'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for March. Bring you up to date first of all with Storm Jorge, and uh, you'll uh, see what been forecast to happen with that in terms of rain and also wind over the uh, next couple of days. Uh, so, very good on that though, just to say that JMA Friday has been released. That's a month ahead look ahead, taking us through pretty much the whole of March. So, um, have, a look, have a look at that, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, see what the JMA and CFS are predicting. Um, tonight, we're going to have the ENSO update for February as well. Your February ENSO update will be with you tonight. Before we do anything else, just want to uh, say about a poll that we're running on the Gals of His YouTube channel. Um, so, I got a plug missing yesterday's video, but I didn't have the time uh, to do it. So uh, if you'd like to take part in the poll, we're asking what you think um, could uh, be spring could be like. If you'd like to take a part take part in the poll, all you need to do is come to Gaz his YouTube channel homepage, click the community tab, and that will take you through to uh, this page where we have written content and also uh, the poll running. So if we scroll down, the uh, post is um, we're just a few days away from Gaz of his spring 2024 cast, which will be released on Sunday the 1st of March. But ahead of that, we're asking you what you think spring 2020 will be like. Remember, this isn't necessarily what you would like to happen with the weather this spring or what you think Gaz of will be forecast. Uh, but what you really think is most likely in the season ahead. At the moment, we have 311 votes. So, big thanks to everybody who's voted in this uh, so far. Uh, so, at the, at the moment, we've got uh, various options. And at the moment, uh, a cold and wet spring is leading on 40%. So, uh, we've got, I think, spring 2020 will be warm and dry, 17%. Think that. Uh, I think spring 2020 will be warm and wet, 23%. Think that. I think spring 2020 will be cold and dry, 11 people, 11%, I should say, think that. And I think spring 2020 will be cold and wet, 40% of the uh, gas of its viewers think we will have a cold and wet spring. Uh, and then 10% uh, think the spring could be average in terms of temperature and rainfall. Of course, there are various other uh, parameters that we could have gone at, but unfortunately, YouTube only allows five options within uh, their polls. So anyway, if you would like to have your... Um, your vote counted. All you need to do is come to this page and then uh, just vote whichever uh, option you think is most likely for this spring. And um, be interesting to see how Gaz Weatherby's viewers compare to uh, the Gaz Weatherby's forecast that's going to be released for the spring of 2020 on Sunday. So it will be uh, the day that we release Gaz Weatherby's spring 2020 forecast. So away you go and happy voting. Uh, right, so this is how things are current looking in terms of flood warnings for England. So uh, we now have zero uh, severe flood warnings. So that's the good news. That last severe flood warning that we had yesterday indicating a dangerous life, that's been removed. We have 67 uh, flood warnings, which is flooding is expected, immediate action is required, and 121 flood alerts. 34 flood warnings are no longer in force. So gradually past few days, things have started getting a little bit better, but of course it's raining again today not only rain there has been snow as well and there's more heavy rain to come courtesy of storm jorge so let's have a look at the latest first of all uh, in terms of precipitation uh from the um from the uh, gfs model at the weather outlook.com so uh we've got of course a heavy rain coming in across the country today it has turned to snow across uh, the northern half of the country as well going to go back to rain across northern england but probably staying as snow across scotland quite a bit of rain on and off through the rest of the Afternoon. Remember, rain will turn rather light and drizzly uh, late in the afternoon into the evening. So not too much wet weather this evening. But then overnight, the rain's going to pick up again out in the west. Looks very wet on this western side of the country tonight and then into tomorrow. We'll see that band of heavy rain pushing eastwards through the morning. Um, we'll move quite quickly, this, I think. So uh, by sort of midday, it's just clearing East Anglia. And then we have lots of showers following 
in behind as the air goes colder those showers probably turn increasingly uh, wintry and that's when the wind uh, will start to pick up as well so through tomorrow afternoon looks pretty wild really heavy wintry showers in many northern and western parts of the country something blown inland as well on those strong uh, to gale or even severe gale force uh, westerly winds and then in the evening and overnight we might get a more general area of sleet or snow developing in the northern half of the country so for northerning northern line some parts of scotland it could actually turn really quite wintry tomorrow evening and into the early hours of sunday in the northern half of the country uh, further south wintry showers mainly confined to west wales southwestern parts of england with uh, many inland areas becoming dry but you notice that particularly for scotland there is a risk of some quite significant snow overnight uh sunday uh, overnight Saturday and into Sunday. It won't only be uh, precipitation moment we can say that will also be wind from Storm Jorge or Storm Jorge uh, depending on how you want to pronounce it. So this is the wind gust for midday tomorrow and we've got severe uh, midday to air should say. We've got strong winds, not quite reaching gale force, but we've got strong winds up the Irish Sea coast. Gusts of 60 miles an hour already uh, in the Irish Sea. So, I mean, that's reaching gale force already. Uh, and we find those heavy winds beginning to push inland through the course of this evening. Again, we could see gusts go up to around 60 miles an hour in the southwest, in the southwest, 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts for other parts of England and Wales too. And then into tomorrow, so through the early hours of tonight, tomorrow, this is 3 a.m. Saturday morning, uh, a strong push of uh, winds through the channel across these more southern counties up to 60 mile an hour gusts there moving along the south coast a very windy start to tomorrow morning in the southeastern corner 50 60 mile an hour gusts possible then things calm down a little bit through uh through the morning but then the winds really pick up through the afternoon this one gets severe gales Ben, blasting in across the irish sea up to 80 mile an hour gusts possible here in the irish sea around the isle of man in particular looks very wild other northern and western parts are actually very windy too so inland across northern england we're around 60 to 70 miles an hour 70 to 80 mile an hour gusts possible around the irish sea here we go again another stormy saturday Today. It seems to be every weekend at the moment we're getting uh, one of these windstorms coming in. And uh, here we are again, 9 o'clock uh, tomorrow evening. Gales or severe gales again through Northern Ireland, South of Scotland, Northern Parts. And it's windy elsewhere, further south, we're talking about 30, 40 mile an hour. Just wind, but the worst looks like it's going to be around these western coasts and inland uh, across parts of uh, northern England and southern Scotland too. The winds begin to moderate down a little bit as we go through into sunny, although it's still quite windy. And even then, for southwest Scotland, spring, uh, winds could still be gusting up to uh, gale force right way through into the evening. It's not until late on Sunday that things finally start to drop out a little bit with those winds. Still quite windy even then, but uh, we lose the severe gales by the end of Sunday. So it's going to be another wild weekend coming up. It's going to be lots of heavy rain. We're going to have these gale or severe gale force winds. And there will also be uh, quite a bit of rain and also wintry showers. And for northern areas, more general areas of sleet or snow mixed in. So it's all happening this weekend. Yet again, another weekend that's been impacted by a named storm. By the way, if you're wondering why uh, we are at Storm Jorge or Storm Jorge, depending on how you want to pronounce it, um, which begins with J, uh, when the last storm, uh, I think, was Dennis. Um, so this hasn't been named by the UK Met. So it's all a bit of a bit, 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 bit of a mix-up, uh, really. It's been named by the Spanish Met office, even though Spain will not be impacted directly by Storm Jorge. Uh, so um, if it was going to be a UK Met or Met Era name, it would be Storm Ellen. That's the next name on the on the UK and Met Aaron list. But this one has been named by the Spanish Met Office and our Met Office and Met Aaron have decided to run with that name. So uh, that's the reason why the name seemed um, uh, out of step with where the last one uh, was, if you see what I mean. So it's all a bit mixed.
big star. But anyway, that's the reason uh, for that. A couple of people have asked me about that um, on social media. So that's the reason we are at uh, Storm Name J rather than Storm Name E. We are still waiting for the uh, for the UK Met Office and Met Aaron uh, named Storm Ellen. And uh, I suppose eventually we will get that at some point in the next few days or weeks. But uh, that's the reason why we skipped from... Uh, I think it's Dennis for last one. That's the reason why we skipped from Dennis to uh, Jorge or Jorge. Right, moving on to the uh, upper air temperature and precipitation ensemble for the next couple of weeks. So uh, the red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for um, London. And we're mild on average at the moment. We have got a mild air mass coming in with this uh, storm, Jorge. Uh, as we go through the weekend, those temperatures are going to drop. And into next week, we go colder than average. So the opening days of March actually looking quite chilly. Uh, through into the end of the first week of March, generally staying quite uh, quite cool. Um, and into the second week of March, we see those upper air temperatures beginning to pick up. It starts to get milder as we go into the second week of March. And also maybe a bit drier. So precipitation-wise, we've got lots of precipitation spikes coming up until around the 8th of March. The end of the first week of March looks unsettled. Further bouts of rain and with pretty cold temperatures, there could be winteriness in there as well. I think we do see a drying trend appearing though through the second week of March, this period just here. It's an extended range, but there is a drying trend. At the same time, it looks like temperatures are lifting up. So, same idea as we talked about in yesterday's rather shortened um, and curtailed uh, video. So, uh, it looks like the second week of March, we could be starting to see uh, definite signs of something drier and maybe rather spring-like beginning to uh, get going. It's certainly possible we Cool. Temperature anomalies, though, from the 28th of February to the 7th of March are coming out below average, going to be colder than average week, not just for the UK, but also for Ireland, much of, uh, much of Scandinavia um, and parts of Norway, and also down into France, a little bit below average there, temperature-wise, in the week. Yeah, precipitation anomalies from 28th of February to the 7th of March, a little bit above average. So it's going to be uh, a rather cold and wet first week to uh, March. We've already established that, I think, quite definitively in the videos recently. So that's how the GFS 6 o'clock run is looking for Monday. Cold and showery, really, on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we just build in a little bit of a transient ridge on Tuesday. Tuesday could be a slightly dry day. But in terms of next low pressure from the southwest, we've got to keep an eye on this. It's taken sort of a southerly track. Back. Um, so uh, there's a weather front just here. It's moving into quite cold air as well. That might produce a little bit of uh, rain or snow for the middle part of next week. We won't know until a bit close to the time frame. Of course, it might just glide away from us into France again. Uh, that's how things look on Thursday. So by Thursday, we're pulling in uh, a cold north to northeasterly wind. Could be some wintry showers associated with that. And then in comes another low pressure as we go through to the first weekend of uh, March, or the first full weekend of March. It's Saturday, 7th of March. Low pressure coming in from the Atlantic and slipping southwards. So could be a little bit of sleet or snow associated with that as well. Uh, but after that, we start to build in some higher pressure. So look at this. We've got today 10, which is Monday the 9th of March. And yes, we are under a 1,035 millibar area of high pressure. Now, this ridge is likely to be quite a cold ridge. So I think it will produce overnight frost, at least initially. Maybe some fog patches. But at least we're drying out. At least having the opportunity to dry out. And then the high pressure sticks with us, really, as we go into the second week of March. So yes, it is a much drier second week of March. It was the ridge is trying to push northwards, trying to send itself up towards Greenland and Iceland and pull down a cold northerly wind. It doesn't come off, actually, on this uh, particular GFS run. We sort of just stick with the ridge very close to us. But it does have a really good go at becoming a northern blocking feature. And as we finish up this GFS run, then it looks like we're starting to try and re-establish a bit more of a unsettled westerly flow by Sunday 15th of March. However, high pressure, even then, is still quite influential. So any weather fronts will be relatively weak. And I suspect, even if we did push a front through there, we will probably get another build of pressure 
uh, behind it. So definitely moving into a drier phase with the GFS through the second week of uh, March up to the middle of the month. A uh, GM looks like that. So again, cold and showery on Monday. And then as we go through into Tuesday and Wednesday, we've got these areas of low pressure sort of around the country, bringing showers, if not longer spells of rain, could be some sleet or snow mixed in as well. Uh, but it's nice to turn more on a settled vote as we come towards the end of the first week of March. GFS doesn't really show this, but the GM brings in another deep area of low pressure. So this is Saturday, 7th of March, and this is possibly another... I won't say it's another named storm, but it certainly looks like another bout of wet and windy weather hitting us on uh, on the weekend, uh, the, the next coming weekend. And then beyond that, the low pressure clears away to the east. We start to pull down some really quite cold northerly winds. So this could be the beginning of high pressure starting to set up by day 10, which of course is Monday the 9th of March. It could be sort of high pressure setting up, but it'll be a cold ridge if it is. Uh, those are real northerly winds. If you follow the isobars map, the air does originate from a very long way north up here and uh, that's a proper cold northerly that we got there at uh, day 10 so yes it may go drier into the second week of march but certainly looks a lot colder and then the ecm looks like that again quite cold and showery on uh monday and then go through to tuesday and wednesday have further areas of low pressure around the country bring showers if not longer spells of rain and there could be winteriness mixed in uh saturday 7th of march another quite deep low coming in off the atlantic that's bring potentially a spell of quite heavy rain and uh, strong winds with it. And then with the ECM, it's the same idea as the GFS, really. That low clears away to, out uh, of the GM, I should say, uh, same idea of the ECM as the GM. The uh, low pressure clears away into the North Sea and it turns the wind into a direct northerly by day 10. Now, I have got this build of pressure coming in behind that northerly. So, yes, we may go, start to move towards higher pressure then. Uh, once the northerly has pulled down this cold air. But it, if it, we do into higher pressure in the second week of March, it will be a cold ridge. It will produce overnight frost, I would have thought, uh, with that northerly um, taking place ahead of the ridge. Uh, this is the precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run. So we've had rain, sleet and snow push across the country. Today is more established. There's going to be a lot more rain to come tonight into tomorrow morning. Can see a storm Jorge and then that gets out of the way. And we're left with lots of wintry showers in the north and west. The showers could merge together into longer spells of snow through northern parts of England and southern Scotland. And much of Scotland actually through uh, Saturday night and into Sunday morning. Another spell of rain could push across these more southern counties during the course of Sunday as well, just giving a soggy Sunday down in the south. Um, a bit of a quiet day on Monday, but still with wintry showers. And then it's going to next week, um, detail to be determined, but certainly there's showers still around. It's not as wet as it is this week, there's certainly showers still around. Some of them are wintry in the north. And if one of those little southerly tracking lows happens to come in our direction around the middle of the week, then that could enhance the risk of rain, sleet and snow. Towards the end of next week and the following weekend it turns uh, wet and windy again another bout of heavy rain and gale force winds hitting us on saturday the 7th of march once that gets out of the way then we start pulling down those cold northerly winds we have a bit of a northerly blast these are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which is the 9th of March from the Icelandic Met Office. We have 18 members of the ECM ensembles that have low pressure over to the south of us, and we bring down quite a cold northerly wind with those. That does include the operational run, the run we've just been looking at. 14 with low pressure over and to the west of the country. We're bringing in a westerly with those. 11 with a ridge building from the north to the west, low pressure to the south and to the northwest a fair amount of dry weather with those although winds could be coming in from like a northeasterly direction so it could be a bit cold but at least they're drying out and eight with high pressure just to our southwest low pressure to our northeast that's trying to dry things out a little bit at day 10 as well and then we go further into the second week of March, and it takes us to two weeks away. It's the 14th of March. Then we have 20 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure sitting over and just to the east of the country. We're bringing like a slack easterly with those. Could be a bit on the cold side, but it would be uh, mainly dry. 20 with high pressure centered perhaps a bit more to the south. That's going to be a drier, but also milder option as the wind comes in from the southwest. And then 11 
Severn with high pressure actually centred over the top of the country. So by the time we get through to the middle of March, the ECM ensembles are strongly moving in favour of high pressure taking over. So that will break us out of the uncertain conditions at least for a while. Finally, this how the CFS V2 is forecasting March. It's 700 millibar height anomaly from the CFS V2 for March 2020. Still going for a westerly month over all above average heights over to the south of the country, below average heights to the northwest. Winds in from a west to south westerly uh, direction during March. Precipitation anomalies are a little bit above average, so it's a slightly milder an average month and precipitation anomalies that temperature anomaly cause precipitation anomalies are um close to average perhaps in still being a little bit on the unsettled side though uh if anything so the signs are still there but we're going to get some high pressure going for the second week of march finally allowing us to dry out it's a little bit indeterminate how long any high pressure will last for but it would be a big pattern change on what we've had for several months really so um it might take a couple of goes at getting into a prolonged spell of high pressure. But nevertheless, I do think the second week of March looks like it should have a high pressure dominated weather. Where the rig sits will be critical as to whether we have a spring-like feel or whether we have quite a cold or wintry feel. That will be... Uh, that's all to be determined where that ridge is going to sit. And then beyond that into the second half of March, that really is up in the air, I think, how long any ridge lasts. And I suspect the Atlantic will have more goes at coming back. Um, and we may have a bit of battling going on maybe in the second half of March between drier, uh, high-pressure dominated periods and still quite unsettled low-pressure dominated periods. There's been such an entrenched pattern of very wet and low-pressure dominated weather that it is a little bit hard to see that we will just flip from, from that to prolonged high-pressure without any... Um, without any problems taking place. So I suspect we will maybe go into uh, a period of alternating drier and more unsettled interludes. But it does look as though we are perhaps coming to the end of the worst of this unsettled spell of weather that we've been in. Remember, we've been in this really since October and November. So it does look as though finally we may be coming to the end of the worst of it. Fingers crossed. But uh, before that, we've got Storm Jorge to get through. And uh, obviously, that's going to bring more heavy rain. There will be a risk of flooding places with that wet weather. And also, we've established tomorrow, there's going to be gales and severe gale force winds as well. Right, that's it for today's second video. We'll be back tonight with this month's ENSO update. That's bringing up to date with everything that's going on in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, the ENSO uh, region. Uh, that'll be around 7 o'clock tonight, I would have thought. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to start. The first video tomorrow will be the uh, second and final Spring 2020 Seasonal Model Roundup. We'll also have a week ahead forecast, of course. Um, as always, on a Saturday, we've got week ahead look ahead. We'll have a 10-day video update with all the regular features. Terry Scold is spring forecast will be released uh, tomorrow as well. Sunday we've got the Gazweather's spring forecast. Gazweather's Sunday roundup probably do ensembles watch and uh, Terry Scott's March for forecast will be released on Sunday as well. So there's going to be loads and loads of updates this weekend. I hope you keep checking, checking back to the website and to the YouTube channel to uh, see all of the updates. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you've enjoyed it. Let YouTube know that you're enjoying our videos. Uh, also, don't forget to tell us in the comments uh, what you think about the vids. And also, take part in the poll if you would like to do that on the Gaz Love's YouTube channel. And also, subscribe to the channel. And then you'll be notified when we upload content like this that you are hopefully enjoying. Right, loads going on over the next uh, day or two, so keep checking back to all of the updates. Ain't so updates, 7 o'clock tonight. That's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.